I'm 55 years of age. I've been in Bolton for about six years living here. Um, I've been a Christian since I was probably six years old, having been raised in a Christian home in the UK. I had a very formal upbringing in the fact that I believed in the third child syndrome, that if you was the middle child, you were the one that was left out. It was obviously only in my head, but it was very real to me. When I was 12, I decided that my parents didn't know the best way for me to be brought up. So with being very naive, very shy, and my inferiority complex was bigger than the high skyscraper, but so I was always with the naughtiest children at school and two of my friends with myself decided we were going to leave home. So we skipped school and we stole hair dye, we dyed our hair and we jumped on a bus with a suitcase from Basildon in Essex, which if, if you don't know in England is towards the uh, London area and we got on a bus and went to London. Now we pretended we were 16 and I can tell you I came so close to losing my everything, my life even, because we, during the course of the events we were picked up by men in Soho and I was almost raped by a man old enough to be my grandfather. But I had a praying mother and a church and somehow within 24 hours God had told the police where we were because there's no other way that they would have pinpointed three young girls running around London in cars and taxis with men that were 26, 30 years of age. And God rescued me from that. How I ever got back, I don't know. But God found us and he saved me. He kept my virginity intact and I thank God because I got home saved. And I grew up from that. Um, I realised that things wasn't always green on the other side of the fence. And God has been with me over my life. And when you look back, it's amazing just how much God does do for you. On the day to day, you don't think God's doing much. And I anger with myself because I fail him every day. Because I don't do what I feel I should do. I don't pray as often as I should do. But I thank God whenever I need him. He's always there. And after, through the years, there's so many things I can tell you about. But when uh, my marriage broke up about 12 years ago, and I stopped going to church, and people were embarrassed. They'd cross the street rather than talk to me because I didn't know what to say. So I stopped going to church. God never left me, but people did. And I think that's a shame. And uh, people think when people need help, it's because they want money. But it's not always money that people need. It's just physical and emotional support, which I, unfortunately I didn't get. But um, I went away, not so much in my faith, but I was just very lonely and I drifted away from God because I had nobody to really share with. I was frightened that my parents would be upset with me for leaving my husband, but I'd had years of him being adulterous and uh, treating me like I was got a mat on my back, wiped my feet here, and that's how my 26 years of marriage was. But I did leave him, and um, during a few six months when my life was really up down, I got to the point where I was driving down the motorway in Birmingham and it was torrential rain and I'd been to see a gentleman that I shouldn't have done and I just thought to myself all I needed to do was drive the wheel of my car into the lorry that was going past me and off it would be over and to get to that point I knew I'd got to do something so I thought to myself God if you're still there for me show me and uh, in the meantime, I, start, I was actually a ballroom dancer. I was fifth in the British Championship with my ex-husband, and that was very important to me. But because I wasn't dancing anymore, and I said to God, can you try me a partner? And through the magazines, I found this man in Oxford, which was 160 miles away from where I was. It just turned out that he was a Christian man. And I thought, well, how, you can't get male partners for dancing because they're just so rare. And I thought, well, it didn't work out, but just the fact he was a Christian just gave me the feeling that God was still looking out for me. And 
Then I went to an evening class to learn conversational French. And there was a woman at the side of me, she was a born again Christian. I thought, well, God is bringing these people not specifically to do anything, but just to prove the point to me. So I thought, well, I've got to find a church. So I just went through the directory and ran this one, and it was open, and I ran another one. And um, it was in Dudley in the Midlands. And by then, I'd met my second husband. Uh, the minister of the church just happened to be a Wolverhampton Wanderer supporter who was in my husband's support. So he used to preach in his wall strip, but he used to have on his back John 3, 16. And so when he's in the wall stand, people say, well, who's John 3, 16? And because then he'd be in it, say, well, that's the gospel of the world. So, it, so it was obviously the right church to be in. It was wonderful to get back to, to, uh, to uh, where I was, because then things came that changes that we arrived in Malta. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. And I know there was a miracle of God directing me to church. And uh, I just thank you for being here. I think Ahmed and for Marcel. And I'm just really glad to be here. And I just assure you that I have got so many things that I can tell you that God has done for me. And so never ever doubt that whatever we do wrong, we still there. Amen. Amen.